Hello, this is Father Louis Skirty with another episode and interview with His Excellency Bishop Frank J. Rodimer, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Patterson, New Jersey. Once again, Bishop, thank you for being a guest. My pleasure. Thank you. We have here today, I mean, Bishop has a beautiful collection of art, but we chose for this segment, Sede Sapientiae. Could you tell us something about Sede Sapientiae? The Seat of Wisdom. This is the... Uh, uh, the patroness of the Sulpician uh, fathers. Right. It's not an order, it's their secular priests. Uh, and uh, But at any rate, they're totally dedicated to seminary work. Education, yeah. right, right. And I, I just about covered all of them. I went to St. Charles College, which uh, Father Kupke oh, right. has pointed out is closed. Yes. Then I went to St. Mary's on Packer Street, which he also pointed Baltimore. out is closed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I went to Darlington, uh, which is not run by the Sulpicians, but by the Archdiocese of Newark. But that's been closed up yes. there, and now it's moved yeah. to uh, <laughs> Seton Hall University. <clears throat> and then finally I went to Theological College for my last year. In Washington. Which yeah. that is still yes, going up, very well. up and running. Yeah. And said it's, uh, well, actually, St. Charles, they're, they're, mo they're proposing to move it to a campus in the Philadelphia area so they can build. So that's interesting, St. Charles Seminary. St. Charles Seminary. But that St. Charles Seminary is uh, is Philadelphia. Right, Philadelphia. I, I, this is separate from that. Oh, St. Oh, Charles oh. College was uh, uh, a, a minor seminary, you'd say. They had uh, and where was that? four years. It was in Catonsville, just outside Maryland. of Baltimore. Oh, okay, yeah. right, right. But and she's become really an important place, and she's been... Uh, restored because they took out all these statues. This was in St. Mary's Seminary, the statue. In one of the bedrooms? It was. Uh, well, I'm not sure because they had it in every room. Yeah, every room. But every it room. probably was in one of the uh, yeah. students' rooms. Yeah. 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 I, I went to St. Mary's Roland Park and I remember her very vividly in yeah. every, every room. Every, yeah. And you know what I also remember? Beautiful pedestals. They were always on a beautiful pedestal. Beautiful. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the only connection we have as, as uh, educators um, having been educated at St. Mary's Roland Park. Uh, Bishop, from there, uh, you were ordained? I was, or, uh, well, I went to Theological College. In Washington. Uh, in Washington. I had the, th the three years at Darlington, and the, the fourth year was at uh, Theological College. Great. Great place. And you were ordained in 1951. 51, right. bless you. Yeah. Things have there were six of us, and five of us were from our own diocese, Patterson, which was a lot for uh, a diocese of our size. Right. And uh, one from Ireland, and then another one was ordained in Ireland. So there are seven in the class of 51 for the diocese of Patterson. And how many are living? And there are three of us. God bless you. Which is not bad, I no, must no, no, say. No, no. Well, I mean, we're, in a, we're pro approaching 90, so and I'm 88 and approaching 89, and... Uh, so, God bless Ad Mozus Anus, as they say. Uh, Tell me, you worked in the diocese, you were a pastor, you also were working in the chancery. One day you become bishop. Tell me how that happened. Well, after Bishop uh, Casey died, I was elected the administrator of the diocese by the Board of Consultors. That's the way it works. And I can remember getting, uh, after certain number of um, months went by. The Archbishop, who was the, the, uh, the nuncio, uh, representative of the Holy See in our mm -hmm. country, was Archbishop Jado. Oh, a Belgian. Jado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there's, there, they, they say that the, the, um, he was told by Bishop, uh, by Pope uh, Paul VI, he was told because his his principal job is the selection of candidates for the episcopate. And he was supposed to have been told by Paul VI, pick pastoral men oh, for this job. Good, good, good. So I got a call from his office inviting me down to lunch on Massachusetts Avenue in Washington, hmm. D.C. And I knew then they're going to look me over. I mean, that was... Yeah, Why else would obviously. I come be done? So anyway, so he said to me, 
he spoke with a French accent, he was Belgian, as I said. He said, I understand, I get a lot of letters from Patterson Diocese saying that it's about time they have a priest from their own diocese. Mm -hmm. We always had from either Newark or New York State. And I said, well, Archbishop, I've heard that too. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I go with that. <laughs> and it was a little bit after that that I got the word that the, the way they send it is the letter, uh, they send, actually a telegram. Uh, the Holy Father has it in mind to name you Bishop of Patterson. And then you're, you're supposed to reply. They have a code name okay. to reply. At least the way that's the way they used to do it. Isn't anyway, that fast? I don't know how they do it now. But at any rate, um, so I had to, you. You are permitted. You can't talk to anybody except your confessor. So I talked to my confessor and prayed over it and sent the word back. Wow, that's fascinating. It's interesting to know the dynamics. I mean, that's as lay people or, yeah. or uh, even clergy i don't know the name well apparently they do a lot of uh, consultation uh, confidential letters oh they must or yeah. interviews and uh, so anyway and you came out tops apparently great <laughs> no it's wonderful because it it's certain i think it was a great uh, experience for the diocese to have our yeah. own homegrown person with experience and yeah. that's you know uh, father Lou, uh, at least once a year, maybe I shouldn't say that, once every maybe three years, the bishops of a province where the state of New Jersey is the province of Newark, uh, send in a list of uh, nominees for possible mm -hmm. uh, choices uh, as a bishop. So, uh, you know, nobody knows it's what's that on that except the bishops themselves. Right, right, right. right. And the archbishop puts them all together. Uh, and sends it into Washington. That's fascinating. So they have a list of candidates. Just got um, what well, happened a few weeks ago. Uh, Bishop Re Bishop Re Bishop Elect Reed Bob Reed from Catholic TV in Boston. Uh -huh. um, I, I've known him through the years and been on his his programs, and uh, he was nominated bishop. He's going to be bishop of uh, one of the bishops of Boston, uh -huh. Robert Reed, young guy. I, yeah, I yeah. mean, he, he looks twenty. <laughs> Yeah, he might be forty, fifty years old, uh -huh. and and I contacted him, and he said, "I don't know what Pope Francis was thinking," yeah. <laughs> and that's interesting because well, he wants he wants pastoral yeah. uh, bishops yeah. too. Yeah. I think so, but but uh, it doesn't preclude people writing to Washington to make nominations or suggestions. Oh, really? I mean that uh, that is that, that, when I mentioned about bishops sending in names. Yes. That's one. That's just one source. I would say it's probably an important one. Sure, sure. But sure. it's not the only one. That's fascinating. I interesting. The I, I don't think I So anybody I'll, out there wants to make a suggestion to the to the Holy Father, you can do it through Washington. You can get the address from Father Lou. Absolutely. I'll give it to you. Contact me. Father Lou Skirty at hotmail dot com. <laughs> but I'm too old to be nominated, so don't put my name. Um <laughs> how many um pa how many parishes did you start as bishop? You know, I don't know, but I can tell you this. When Bishop Nava came, he was very interested in establishing parishes. Uh, and he asked me for a list. Um, he says, give me a list of names of places where you think uh, a mission could be found in oh. there. <clears throat> Pardon me, because he did that when he was in uh, uh, in, in Buffalo. And uh, a lot of them are cl being closed up. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, so I did that. And he did uh, several of them. Oh, but Bishop it. Casey was very reluctant. Uh, he founded only one. Uh, and that was one that had been started before Bishop Nava died. He founded none beyond that. Oh, yeah. And so I had a heyday. Yeah. <laughs> it's your turn. Yeah. That's great. And... If you think about the number of uh, ordinate not ordinations but confirmations and and parish experiences that you had through the years, yeah. uh, it must be overwhelming. How many people have come to you and said, "Oh, Bishop, you you confirmed me," and my children. And now they're saying grandchildren. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, Monsignor Cupke uh, has estimated 
that I have confirmed 100,000 uh, individuals. In That's that. a lot of chrism. Yeah. And he, he never tells a lie. Oh, that's good. And he's, he's always the, accurate. Yes, and, and he is the, the, the diocesan archivist. I cut this out of the paper, too. Um, besides being ordained and, and um, confirming 100,000 Catholics, you you also were very um, influential in establishing the diaconate, the lay di- of the uh, transitional diaconate. Actually, per- diaconate. Bishop Casey did that, and he, he was very, very... Um, interested in the diaconate, and so was I. And I, I, I just think it's been a tremendous blessing to the, to, to the church. The church, yeah. And uh, he also, while we're talking about uh, him and uh, uh, his, his good things that he started, he said it was time for us to have our own newspaper, diocesan paper. And he got the the name for it, the Beacon, right. and um, he got this wonderful, uh, wonderful editor, Jerry Costello. Oh, God. Who was one still of the, writing. Such a pro. Yes, yes. And uh, so the paper became very good. And he wrote for it faithfully every week, mm. and uh, and so he left me a, a great precedent. Right. So I tried to do that too. That's fascinating. Right, every way. I can remember being on a ski trip up in um, in in Vermont on a snowy uh, evening the night before the paper went to press. Always went to press on on Tuesday, um, and uh, uh, dictating my column <laughs> in a <laughs> phone booth right. with the snow coming oh, down. Oh, isn't that uh, fast? <laughs> Days so, before internet and, and emails, but I never missed one. So that's um, great. That's what. What are some of the uh, fondest memories you have a, as bishop in in our diocese? I I think that uh, probably um, the visitations of the of the parish. Uh, people people I must admit are very very. Uh, Anxious to, to see the bishop yes, and to say yes, hello to yes, him and, yes. and to get his blessing and uh, I think being being able to celebrate mass, which for any priest I'm sure is the highlight of mm. uh, uh, of their life. I remember the vice chancellor in my early days, um, Monsignor Stefan. Is he before in your time? No, yeah, before he my was time. a yeah. big man really? in every way. He was a big man. <laughs> yeah. But I remember we had a uh, day of recollection every first Friday, and he always read, we always had it at the Jesuit house in Loyola in Marstown, and I always remember him reading just the way he said it, every single uh, uh, first Friday, um, whenever the day was that we had it, at any rate. And he, he spoke about them as, it's not a part of the day. It is the heart of the day. Oh, wow, beautiful. And just the way he said yes, that, beautiful. I just waited for that <laughs> <laughs> That's great. In, in his little reflection. Beautiful. Yeah. But I think celebrating this, particularly, you know, I, I have a beautiful chapel here in this home, which I'm grateful for. Uh, the whole place is just beautiful. This beautiful library and, uh, and, and my chapel, the two most important rooms. <clears throat> but... Um, and I celebrate Mass alone, but it's not the same. Mm-hmm. I must say, you know, I love celebrating. Yes. Uh, and I always think of, about the people with me in spirit, and I'm with them in spirit. But being in a parish and celebrating Mass, even if it's not a big congregation, um, it's, it's, it's really what we do mm. as mm-hmm. Catholics, mm is to offer up the Mass. You know, I, I just began to realize this in more recent years, that, you know, we uh, at a solemn Mass, we, we incense the altar, yes. inc- incense the oblata, the offerings, the bread and the wine, and then they offer, then they incense the celebrant. Right. And most places, and it's a good thing to do, they go out and they celebrate the people. Yes. The reason for that is because all of us are part of the oblation. Yes, yes. We're all being offered up. We all share in the priesthood mm. 
and also being we share in the victimhood because uh, anybody who is baptized shares in the priesthood of Christ. Uh, they, the ones who are ordained have uh, that consecration to uh, being the priest of Christ. But we all share in the priesthood and we also share in the victimhood. Yes. And that's why we are all incensed. I can listen to you forever. <laughs> um, and one of the most beautiful things I, I uh, remember each time I'm gathering with you at Mass is your homilies. And you always, well, as you're sharing now, some of you are in private with us, you always bring in your heart, your experiences, and you always have a little story or an anecdote that relates to the theme. Yeah. Um, what is what is the place of a homily? Okay, in celebrating Mass is very important. What is the place of the homily from your perspective in the celebration? Yeah. Well, it's a chance, really, to take the Word of God and to touch people's hearts so that in some way they're, uh, they're encouraged. I mentioned, at, uh, uh, you know, in speaking to the priest the other day, that uh, that quotation from, from Hebrews, Hebrews is, yeah, it's, it, it was, uh, encourage one another daily while it is still today. And as I say, I have it written down on my prayer to his facility. I think we need that. We need encouragement. We need to be able to help one another. Uh, to the, and I think that that's, um, that's really what a homily is supposed to do. Mm. Pope uh, John Paul, now St. John Paul the II, and uh, speaking to the young people uh, up in Ottawa in 2002, said that we are not the sum of our mistakes and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love and of our capacity to be images of his Son. And I, I think to myself, well, if we can help, uh, and, and if the, the homily can do that, to help people well, the past is the past, right, right. and we, we can't dwell on the things that went that wrong in our life. We have to admit them, we have to grow for them, you know, we have to be sorry for them, but that's it. We right. have to move on. We have the capacity to be the image of God, of the Father's Son, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the purpose of a homily, to help people do that. You are such a pastor, I swear. It really, I mean, you really are, I mean... Even I mean I've known you so many years, but even listening to you now, listening to the love of the church, the love of your role as as bishop, as pastor, as yeah, priest, yeah. it's just so encouraging for me. Even though I'm retired and you know ordained forty something years, uh, it, it still encourages me to go on. Just knowing that you still have that love and that vibrancy in you, and you well, share I, it. you know, Father, if you don't have it after sixty five years. <laughs> 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 You're sunk. That's true. <laughs> and in fact, I think that it does grow. I think that, uh, and I think that we help each other grow. Uh, just as in a family, family is the most important segment of, of human uh, society. And the, the members really, uh, you know, whether they fight or, or, or make up and do so forth. But the family is meant to support one another. Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the St. James speaks about that. Never go to bed <coughs> angry. Uh, I mean, settle it and yes. in your own mind, particularly. Uh, you know, don't, no, don't carry things over because it doesn't do any good. It just... I That's often true. think of that when, when in, in sleeping, uh, problems come up. We, we, we face them in our mind because we have that kind of mentality. Somewhere along the line, I learned to say, look, Frank, you, you can't do anything about that now. And it's unfair for you to, to think of these things. Forget about it. <laughs> Tomorrow's another day and we'll... And I think it's important to be able to do that. You know? Absolutely. Being so down to earth has raised my spirits. Thank you so much for these interviews, Bishop. I really appreciate well, your sharing your heart 
with our audience. Well, you're kind. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Good. God bless Many you. years, and I want to celebrate your 90th with you at least. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Father Louis Skirty with His Excellency Bishop Frank J. Rodimer, uh, Bishop Emeritus of the Diocese of Patterson, celebrating 65 years as a priest and still going strong. God bless you. And if you want to uh, contact Bishop, you can contact him through me, Father Lou Skirty at hotmail.com, and I'll pass your comments on to him. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you.